debt collectors. It's understandable that banks want credit card customers to stay current with their bills. What's less easy to understand is how some debt collectors have gotten away with some very offensive behavior. Especially shocking is the obscene, even racist language used in calls, placed at all times of the day and night. But now, it's been caught on tape. Senior investigative correspondent Brian Ross brings us this report. Brian? Cynthia, complaints about debt collectors and their tactics remain by far the number one source of consumer complaints received by the Federal Trade Commission. And based on what we found in an ABC News investigation, the tactics have reached an all-time low, in some cases used on behalf of major American corporations. Received August 7th at 8.10 p.m. What's up, Tell me, how do you stop two kids from jumping on top of your bed? After Bank of America reported that 26-year-old Alan Jones had an overdue credit card bill of $81, its debt collectors went on the attack with a series of obscene, racist messages left on his phone. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Jamal Smith, and I'm looking for some watermelons. Um, I'm also interested in a couple of slaves. Maybe you can go ahead and pick some of my cotton fields. Go ahead, give me a call to lick my Jones, a clothing salesman in Dallas, says the debt collector's calls continued even after he told them his Bank of America account was up to date. I double checked um, with my bank, went online, and to please quit calling my phone. Uh, by that time, you know, the, the representative acted like, oh, we could call you as many times as we want. And the calls continued, each incredibly more obscene and disgusting than the one before it. 10.41 p.m. What's up, you <laughs> Talking about going back to my uh, Mexico and go mother back to Africa or some Fix some cottons over there, bitch. 10.44 p.m. Using the name of Jones's wife. Hi, I'm looking for Ashley. Hey, Ashley, this is your papi over here, man. I'm waiting for you. Come on over up into my seat. I'll take care of you, man. I'll show you what a vato can do for you, man. 6.33 the following morning. This is your wake up call, man. 6.34 a.m. What's up, This is your papi calling you. Mother wake up call, you little lazy ass bitch. Get your mother ass up and go pick some of Cotton field, bitch. All right. Jones says the calls continued for weeks with threats to shank him, a prison term for a knifing, and to harm his family. To hear somebody, you know, talk about my kids, um, uh, the things that they wanted to, that they was going to do to me, like, you know, shank me and tear me a new a hole, you know, all the things over $81. Jones's lawyers were able to track the calls to the debt collection company used by Bank of America, Advanced Call Center Technologies, ACT, and one of its employees in Harlingen, Texas, Carlos Oliva, who also worked as a supervisor there. Hey, what's up? Mr. Oliva, is that a, uh, a voicemail message you, that you left? Uh, I guess if it's recorded, it, it sounds like me. That, that sounds like me a whole lot. In testimony for a lawsuit brought by Alan Jones, the debt collector said he had been hired by ACT just seven months after he left prison, where he said he developed racial attitudes. So it's kind of hard to shake off six years of prison time. In another case involving another Bank of America customer, the same debt collection company hounded Jeff Burke of Lynchburg, Virginia with similar phone tactics. Saved message Wednesday, 1.58 p.m. Yeah, so that's that you ain't gonna pick the phone, huh? Yeah, why you gotta be scared? Don't wanna pick up the phone now? Huh? Is it because you're in bed with your sister? Or with your mom? Your cousin? Huh? Or what? Little punk? But it was a case of mistaken identity. Burke said he received calls like that for months until they finally realized they had the wrong person. The calls came from a blocked number. The individual would not identify himself. I had no way to put an end to the phone calls. Both Burke and Alan Jones sued ACT. Yeah, that's what I thought. You were Jones's gonna, lawyers you claim phone, the company huh? hires young, aggressive collectors and supervisors with shady backgrounds and has a culture of using racist approaches if it gets someone to pay up. 
In my opinion, they'll dehumanize anybody, Brian, to get the money. The collectors get paid a percentage. They get paid a percentage of what they collect. We have testimony that they're going outside on breaks and getting high. They live the thug life. They have a prison mentality. These are the people ACT chose to hire to collect debt for Bank of America. ACT's chairman says it has since increased oversight and that the calls in question were made by rogue operators in violation of the company's values. I've worked very hard to, uh, you know, to, to help build this company with our management team. And it's, it's unthinkable that somebody would call somebody and do that. But obviously there was a personal agenda, obviously, that this person had. But it was more than just one person, though. There's one other case, but I don't think that... But the, the testimony uh, of mm -hmm. others suggests, according to the lawyers or Mr. Jones, what they call a culture of thugs at your operation in Texas. I don't know that, you know, I, won't, I can't speak to that, you know, what to would you those say specifics. To that? I would say that's absolutely false. But at trial, a jury found both the callers and the company responsible and awarded Alan Jones more than one and a half million dollars. Hopefully, this will motivate people around the country to actually do something about it and don't just sit up and be subject to abuse from these harassing companies. But that message seemed to have fallen on deaf ears at Bank of America. Even after the verdict, even after we sent the company copies of the obscene phone calls on its behalf, Bank of America continued to use the same debt collection agency to handle overdue accounts. Making my bitch, man. If Bank of America won't stop sending its business to collection agencies like this, then it's going to continue. The buck has to stop with the creditor. Bank of America refused to provide anyone to talk to us on camera for this report. So we went looking for its CEO, Brian Moynihan, well, a story for ABC who said he was unaware of the problem, of so we gave him a copy of the recorded calls. My question is, let me know why Bank of America still uses them? I'll let you know when I find out. Is that kind of language, is that acceptable to you? The it would not be acceptable. The F word? I would not be acceptable. Me. I'll find out. Thank you, you let me know? Yep. Thank you very much. Two days later, Bank of America essentially fired the debt collection agency as a result of what we raised in our investigation, according to the agency chairman. Bank of America says their decision had nothing to do with our story. As one senior federal official said, the problem is abusive phone calls work. And the bottom line has too often trumped common decency and the law, Cynthia. Mm, what a story. What a powerful investigation. Our thanks, Brian, as always.